not a great night on Wall Street. The Dow in particular. In the end, we closed down about eight tenths of a percent. What did you make of it? It wasn't a bad performance for the Australian market at all. As you mentioned, James, we did see a very weak lead coming through from overseas market. We saw European markets down sharply. In fact, in Germany and in France, we saw the stock market down more than 2%. The commodities being hit hard and the miners dragging down the FTSE overnight as well. Yet on the Australian share market, we've seen losses of just 0.8%. I think we've been helped along by those China numbers coming out, the HSBC flash PMI numbers. It's the first look that we get into the manual manufacturing space in China for the month of October and really supporting that perhaps we have seen growth bottoming out in China and that we'll, we will see some improvements. Because of the commodity price falls that we saw overnight, we did see the energy sector and the material sectors being the worst hit on our market. The energy space was the worst, down by 1.6%, and we also saw the material space down by 1.4%, but a little bit of an improvement after those China numbers were released. In fact, Fortescue actually managing to finish the day in the black. Instead, it were the defensive stocks which outperformed the staples. The healthcare sectors did well, as did the banks ahead of ANZ coming out with its full year result tomorrow. AGMs season in full swing. It was nice to see Fairfax seeing a very nice bounce up by 7.9% by the end of the session coming off all-time record lows and Billabong also in focus. That's still not moving too much up by 0.6% but it was interesting to note that Gordon Merchant did manage to retain his board position. So altogether the Australian market not doing too badly but unfortunately once again some anemic volumes coming through the market. Only $3.8 billion being traded and that means we haven't been able to crack the four billion dollar mark once this year, week yet. Julia, just on Fairfax, obviously the AGM, as you made mention, uh, fascinating movement in terms of their share price. Look, what do you put it down to? I mean, what in particular do you think Boyd uh, investors? Because we were listening to both the, the addresses by Mr. Corbett, the chairman, as well as uh, Greg Highwood, the CEO, and there was a lot different from what they previously said, particularly at their uh, reporting announcements. Not a huge difference, but I guess um, in terms of Fairfax, we have seen a little bit of a clearer picture in terms of a no breakup of the company scenario. And while they have done some modelling on the breakup of Fairfax, uh, its assets in, in terms of this current environment probably wouldn't be able to retain uh, the values uh, that is expected by the market in a breakup scenario. So it looks like no breakup. Um, they will be running with their newspaper strategy until, uh, I guess, but in a more digital form instead of a paper perform and the market just gaining a little bit of confidence in terms of Fairfax shares not deviating in terms of strategy but I guess are uh, ruling out a few scenarios uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the company and the underlying business and some of the hard steps have already be been taken I think the next couple of years with Fairfax what you're seeing uh, is a transitional period so we aren't going to see some st any sort of stellar results until we start seeing uh, the cycle really turning but it has made some difficult moves and hopefully that starts to bear fruit in the next uh, after a couple of years. All right, personally, one of the on uh, equities, but also on the Aussie dollar, getting good lift off uh, some data out today, in particular, um, a stronger than expected CPI. We did see those inflation numbers coming in um, ahead of expectations, up 1.4% for the quarter. And if we have a look at core CPI, up by 0.8%, beating expectations of a 0.6% rise. So if we have a look at underlying inflation, I guess the average of the two, uh, two measures which is used, it's at 2.5%. So that's the jump from 2%. And that really decreases the chance of a rate hike in the month of November. So we have seen the Aussie dollar jumping up on the expectations of that. We have a look at the Aussie dollar on the Australian share market and during the Asian session today, this is what it looks like. And if I just, uh, if I just magnify uh, the session a little bit, you can see the CPI impact just here. And then we saw another boost once the flash PMI numbers came out of China. And those HSBC uh, flash PMI numbers, the first three that we get into the manufacturing space, actually at the highest level that we've seen in around about three months. So that was a positive for the Aussie dollar uh, there. So two data points today around the region. One was inflation here and the other was the first read that we get on the manufacturing sector in China, both of them decreasing the chances of a rate hike in the month of November. Enough to continue to support the Aussie dollar.